Hey, welcome to Chuvu. I'm Jacob. This is Quinn, and this is Xanthi, and this is Boudica, and today we're foraging for the edible pine mushrooms, Lactarius deliciosus, or the saffron milk cats. I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways on how to dehydrate these for later use. But first, we need to collect some of these bad boys. Basically, we're going to turn this into this. If you want a few tips on how to correctly identify a saffron milk cap, I suggest you check out this video. That being said, I do think it is important to always go out with someone who's experienced because... Although there's not too many lookalikes to the saffron milk cap, there are a few cheekies around, so it's always better to be safe than sorry. However, this video should give you a few tips anyway. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> so why should you dry mushrooms? Well, it's pretty obvious to preserve them. Mushrooms, certain mushrooms, only grow at certain times of year, predominantly in the Adelaide Hills for pine mushrooms. It's the colder months. So autumn, the start of winter, you might get a second flush around spring if you're lucky. So for most of the year, they're unavailable. They don't freeze very well unless you want to throw them into soup, but when you freeze them, it breaks the cell structure. When you defrost them, they get all mushy and yuck. That's okay if you just want to bulk out a lasagna or something like that. But it's not ideal if you want nice, fresh, crispy mushrooms. You can usually get store-bought mushrooms all year round, Saffron milk caps are a little bit expensive, porcinis are expensive. A lot of the stuff that we forage for is difficult to get or it's expensive. And why pay money for something that's growing for free? Where I go in Kaipo Forest in the Adelaide Hills, there's a little tip, run around Kaipo. I'm often just walking over mushrooms that are rotten. I'm looking for the fresh ones because people aren't picking them. So there are an abundant, an abundant resource of delicious, complex, full proteins available to you in your local area if you're around there or you know where to go for free. Dehydrating is just one of the many ways to preserve and that's what we're gonna focus on today. So how do you know if a mushroom is dry? Well, to get them properly dry, they should snap like a chip. So I pretty much made here a bunch of mushroom chips because I'm gonna turn this into a powder. I like to make mushroom powder, mushroom salt. It's a great way to add umami, a meaty flavor without adding meat or if you're like me and you like to eat meat, double down on that meat flavor, baby. If it bends and it's not, or you have to tear it apart, it means there's still a bit of moisture in there. Now, it might last a while, but it won't last as long as if they snap like a crisp. So let's get to it. This is my new favorite thing for dehydrating foods. And it is very efficient and very good at dehydrating a great many things, including mushrooms. The issue I find is that mushrooms typically grow during the colder months of the year autumn, winter, maybe early spring, where this will be missing one very crucial component. Me! <laughs> yeah, the sun. So I'm gonna do a video on this come spring, summer, a build video, show you how to do it, why a solar dehydrator is one of the best things you can have in your garden. Until then, let's go. The easiest and most cost-effective way of drying your mushrooms is to simply slice them quite thin Place them on a bit of recycled paper or any old paper, newspaper, a piece of cardboard and put them in a dry space and just simply wait for them to dry. If the humidity is low enough, i.e. the room is dry enough, then it shouldn't take more than a couple of weeks, maybe a week, for them to almost completely dry out before the rot or the mold sets in. If you have a heat source, place them next to that, even better. This fireplace is absolutely perfect. You see, I'm gonna be running this fire most nights in winter anyway, so this is on. I understand that fire is not free, but if you're gonna be running your heat source anyway, place them next to the fire. The downside is obviously wood costs money, so you don't wanna do this just for mushrooms, but like I said, if it's already on, not an issue. So these three pieces of A4 paper might be three mushrooms this big. So as you can see, once they're sliced, they take up a lot of space. So you're gonna have this whole floor covered. If you've got dogs, if you've got little ones running around, if you're me, stumbling through the room, 2 a.m., pissed as a far up, looking for that last beer that might be in the fridge, you can see this might be a precarious position to say the least. The plus side is it's very cost effective. You don't need to buy anything to do this. You just need to chop them up and place them down. The downside is it takes up a lot of real estate. You have to have your fire running. It's exposed to the elements, dog hair, dust and dirt, you stomping on it, your kids flicking it, whatever. So there's pros and cons. This is the best way. This absolutely will dry them out to, to the point where they're snap dry. But then, as, like I said, there is some minor downsides to this method. So you might not have a solar dehydrator, which probably won't work in winter anyway. You might not have a regular electric dehydrator. You might not have a fireplace or a cool dry space, but probably everyone has one of these. 
either electric or gas or whatever, an oven. Ovens are a fantastic way to dehydrate your mushrooms. There is a couple of issues. One, it uses power. Two, it clogs up your oven. And if your oven doesn't go low enough, it won't work. Remember, hotter is not better. We don't want to cook the mushrooms. We want to suck the moisture out of them between 60 and 70 degrees, you don't want to go any hotter than that. So if your oven doesn't get that low, it won't work. You might dry them out or cook them slightly and crisp them, but that's not what we're going for here. We want to dehydrate them, not cook them. If your oven can get low enough, it's a great way to dehydrate your mushrooms. Put them in there, 65 degrees Celsius, leave them in there for a few hours and you're set. The plus side is it's contained. You're not going to get any dust or any grit in there. It doesn't take very long. It's pretty cost effective. Uh, limited spacing though, but ovens is one of the best ways to dehydrate your mushrooms. You can dehydrate pine mushrooms whole, however, it is better to get more surface area, so slicing them up. Now, if you're like me and you never learned how to do the fancy chef chopping, a little tip is to use a grater that has a wide blade on the side. You can just grate them to get perfectly even slices. You might have a few crumbly bits, but they'll still dry out anyway. A classic electric dehydrator is one of the best ways you can dehydrate your mushrooms, although there are a few cons. There's a few pros and there's a few cons. The pros are it's contained, so you're not going to get much gunk in there. When I do jerky in this thing, a few flies get in there, but mushrooms, they don't really seem to bother. So you might get a few bugs, but generally speaking, you're not going to have too much contaminants. Secondly, it's very nice and tight, so it's efficient use of space. Easy to clean, you've got dedicated trays that are, the sole purpose is for this. It's not gonna tie up your oven. When you buy this, you can use it for all kinds of different things, fruits, chilies, meats, whatever, mushrooms. The downside is for mushrooms, even on a higher setting, you're gonna have to leave this thing on for like 15 hours minimum, depending on how thick you cut your mushrooms. The other downside, not unlike the oven, that when you slice those mushrooms, it's, you're not getting too many in there. You're getting four, five, six, seven mushrooms, depending on the size. So you're not getting heaps of space. So you might want to get two of these. Now you're talking 15 hours on two devices using a lot of power. If you have solar power, however, that might chip away at some of those costs. You can use this all year round. You don't need to have a fire. You don't need to have a sun. <laughs> the sun doesn't need to be out. But again, it is using a lot of power. It's limited in space. Plus there's the cost of the unit. So yes, this is very efficient, but it will cost you a lot of power. It takes a lot of time. It's noisy and it pumps out gas. This is essentially a hairdryer blowing down. So it's sucking in air through the top, blowing hot air like a hairdryer. Imagine running a hairdryer for 15 hours. It's going to take up a lot of time and a lot of power. And then it's pumping out smelly mushroom gas. So you're going to want to put this thing outside. Now when I'm doing jerky, I don't mind it being in the laundry. It makes my house smell a little bit like delicious meats. Drying mushrooms can be a bit stinky. Hey, hey, don't touch that, don't touch that. Drying mushrooms can be a little bit stinky, so you're gonna to have to put this thing outside where it's gonna be rattling away for 15, 20 hours. So I don't like to do this for mushrooms. Herbs, fantastic. I put sage in there, it takes two hours, I'm done. Mushrooms, I just think the costs of the outweigh the benefits. So my solution to the drying in front of the fire is to build a drying rack. So I knock this up, it's a prototype. It's pretty much just a more sophisticated version of the drying on the newspaper phase. And by sophisticated, I mean not very bloody sophisticated at all. You can actually buy hanging racks for herbs. I wanted something that looked a little bit more wooden. Like I said, this is just a prototype. I'll probably build something more like a meat locker in the future. This is gonna be sitting out here for about a week. Now I don't want something that looks too tacky, Again, <laughs> this is not my best piece of furniture I own, but it's a prototype. So I'll probably make something that's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing because it's going to sit there for a week whilst drying or multiple weeks, months during the harvesting or foraging period, i.e. all of winter. So I wanted something that's going to sit there, flat top, so I can still put something else on there if I wanted a statue or an ornament or just more herbs and things like that. This was pretty cheap to make. I've knocked these up or I found them around the house. Or I picked them up from Kmart or a thrift shop, something like that. It's just a tray. You can get any old bit of wood. I got the trays that are inside there from one of those cheapest chip type places. You could probably, if you're lucky enough to get a set, making sure they're the same width at the very least, you can get it from op shops, thrift shops and things like that. Recycling is always the best way to go, which is where I got these from too. These are some old pallets that I found on the side of the road. And so I delicately pulled apart the pallets so that I can use the wood for other projects, including this. So this was very cheap. Again, like I said, this is just a prototype. I'm going to make this a lot taller, a lot more aesthetically pleasing. 
I mean, I say I'm going to, I don't actually know. Again, it's only four trays, so it is limited to space. I would like something that's 20 odd trays and something that doesn't look out of place in my lounge room, but it is ultra, ultra effective. Being on the trays off the ground instead of the newspaper, for example, lets that air flow through. So they do dry out quicker. Newspaper is the cheapest way to go. This is a lot quicker. So there is a bit of a small cost, your screws and whatever, but it's not that dear and it is ultra effective. And you can put them in here for a little bit, then finish them off in the oven or the dehydrator. So you get 99% of your moisture out here. They will shrink. Like I said, one of the downsides to the dehydrator and the oven is limited space. Once they've been dehydrated for a bit, they will half even more in size. So put them in here for about a week. They'll get almost snap dry. They'll shrink. You can then finish them off in the oven or the electric dehydrator. That is the most effective and efficient way I've found and cost effective way to dehydrate a lot of mushrooms in a short amount of time while saving a few bucks and oh well that's that's pretty much it thanks for watching guys don't forget to check out our other mushroom videos we got the correctly identification one how to find them we also have a few recipes we're going to be doing more recipe videos what's your favorite way to preserve mushrooms for future use remember dehydrating is just one of the many ways leave a comment and let's get a friendly discussion going thanks guys